Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, Citadel, $200,000 salaries. The University of Waterloo is Canada's best engineering university. And I know what you're thinking. When I hear the word Waterloo and engineering, I immediately think of a bunch of 18 year old weebs who haven't showered in a week. But while it's got a bad rap for its social life, it's got a strong co-op program and a great education. My name's Justin and I'm going to tell you how I got into the computer engineering program at Waterloo. Number one, we have Marks. Now, this is pretty much the biggest factor of you getting into Waterloo Engineering. The top six courses Waterloo looks at are English, Calculus, Advanced Functions, Chemistry, Physics, and one elective. English is probably going to take your mark because that's all English ever does, so just make sure you maximize your marks in Calculus, Advanced Functions, and try to get a decent mark in Physics, I guess. And if you're wondering about Grade 11 marks, Waterloo doesn't care too much about your Grade 11 marks, but they do care about them for the early acceptance. I wouldn't stress too much about it though, because most people get them for the late rounds. And for your overall average, I would probably aim for around a 95 or 96 average and above, but this really depends on the engineering program you're applying to. Like if you're applying to a tier 1 engineering or a tier 2 or tier 3, it's going to vary differently depending on this chart right here. Like hey, someone applying for software engineering with a 95% average has a really low chance of getting in, but if they apply for management engineering then they can actually easily get in. Now if you're wondering what average I had when I got in, I got in for the early round so they looked at some of my grade 11 marks. So I got 100 in computer engineering grade 11, 96 in English grade 11, 99 in advanced functions, 97 in physics, 96 in chemistry, and 99 in grade 11 functions. That means my average was around a 97.8, but compared to other high schools, it was actually a 101%. But why is this? The adjustment factor. Now a couple years ago, there was a rumor going around that Waterloo actually looked into what high school you went to. Based on that, they selected their applicants or did some sort of ranking. And it actually turns out this is true. And this is something called the adjustment factor. This is something that you can't really control, but you can actually look at this to see if you have a higher chance of getting in. The adjustment factor works by subtracting the adjustment factor number that your high school has from your overall average. Now the lower the adjustment factor that your high school has, the better. So if you went to my school, for example, and you had an adjustment factor of around 10, then your average pretty much only gets subtracted by 10 compared to other high schools, which may have an adjustment factor of 14 for the average Ontario high school, meaning that you have a 4% average boost in comparison to the average Ontario high school. Now, the adjustment factor is a number that's calculated from looking at the average drop of marks from the people from your high school in their first year of university. So realistically, if you come from an inflated school, Waterloo always knows. Next up, we got the video interview. A bunch of you guys who are probably socially awkward like me are probably really nervous, and I know I was really nervous when I heard that we had to do a video interview for Waterloo Engineering. Now on the website it says it's optional, but it's weighted 5 points on your AAF, so pretty much it's mandatory at this point. Pretty much the video interview works by answering 3 open-ended questions about your engineering goals, interests, passions, and your experience in engineering. What really helped me when I was answering questions for the Waterloo interviews was following something called the STAR method. And this is something that you can use for interviews not just for university but also for your job applications when you're applying for co-op. Now the STAR method works by splitting up into 4 parts, situation, task, action, and result. So how this pretty much works is situation is where you list out the scenario relating to the question and you just give background information to the person that's watching your interview. And then task is where you describe what you were assigned to do in that situation. Action is where you specify what solution you chose to handle the situation. And then result is what the outcome was of the solution that you chose for the situation. As long as you follow these four fundamental steps of structuring your interview, then you should be fine in answering any of the questions that they throw at you. Waterloo actually provides a bunch of practice questions on the Cura Talent website, which is the application that they use for the interview. And the actual video interview questions are actually really similar. So I'd really recommend using those to practice the video interview, as well as just going on the internet or Reddit, trying to look for questions that might come up for your video interview. Now the most important part of your application, the AAF. This is split up into a few sections. The first section is where you talk about your interest in Waterloo, and the other section is where you talk about your interest in your engineering program. When you talk about your interest in Waterloo, this is actually where you can kind of sort of suck up to Waterloo itself and show that you're actually really passionate about Waterloo, show that you did a lot of research into the program itself, especially the co-op program, but also talk about any clubs maybe that you're interested in. Just maybe mention a few things to show that you've actually researched stuff relating to your program. In the section where you talk about your interest in Waterloo, you also have 
have to list out your extracurricular activities as well as any awards that you did as well as any math contests and big achievements that you've done. Waterloo's just trying to see if you're a well-rounded individual in terms of doing academics as well as some physical activities and some hobbies and passions in your free time. Now you have to write a paragraph about your extracurricular activities and when you do this don't just list them out you want to actually talk about what you did so what your role was what your impact was in the team or the group that you were in. Waterloo just wants to see if maybe you're a leader in the group. Now there's also a section where you can add additional information and you don't want to leave this blank because Waterloo is still going to read this part as well. So just make sure you fill out anything else talking about additional extracurricular activities that you maybe didn't get a chance to talk about. Now in the section where you talk about your engineering interests, this is where you get more specific into your program itself. Now you want to talk about your engineering related experiences and talk about how you developed your passion in engineering, as well as talking more about your interests in engineering. Now, in the first section where I talk about my engineering interests, I talk mainly about my interest in electronics, as well as computer software and computer hardware. And I also talked about my involvement in a summer enrichment program called SHAD, which is where you do a bunch of engineering activities for a month at a university. And I did it at the University of British Columbia. And I think that experience definitely helped with my application. Then the last thing that I talked about was my experience in an internship for front of development. Then the second section is where you talk about why specifically you want to go to Waterloo Engineering. And this is where I talk more about the design teams at Waterloo, as well as the Velocity program, as well as the Hack the North Hackathon that Waterloo always hosts every year. For these sections as well, you don't just want to talk about what you did, but you also want to talk about how you did it and why you did it. Now you guys know the basic fundamentals for getting into Waterloo Computer Engineering or just Waterloo Engineering in general. Before you apply though, just think about what you're getting yourself into first. I know the co-op and everything is great, but just keep into consideration the social aspect of the campus because Waterloo itself is really dead. So if you want a social campus, then maybe just think about potentially applying for something else. But overall, if you do really like the co-op program and just Waterloo in general, then yeah, definitely apply for it. And if you did find this helpful, then don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. I'll talk more about my journeys in Waterloo engineering and specific to computer engineering in the future.